Hello everyone, we will continue with a testing of fiber parameters. In last few classes, we have discussed about the measurement of fiber length and the distribution of fiber length. We have discussed the measurement techniques of fiber fineness and also in last class we have discussed the maturity. Now, we will continue with the measurement techniques of fiber and this technique or at present what we will discuss the two commercial instruments where only cotton fibers are used and these instruments are not for a single parameter. In this instruments we measure the large number of combined parameters, large number of parameters okay. and these are very fast, it is not slow, it is a large volume of fibers can be tested. These two equipments are it is a combination of test methods, to combination of parameters are testing. This is one is HVI high volume instrument and F FIS advanced fiber information system. Both these instruments are basically used for cotton fiber testing. Now, first we will discuss about the high volume instrument testing. This high volume instrument system measures various physical characteristics of cotton fiber. In last segments what we have discussed like for measurement of fiber characteristics a particular technique used for a measurement of a particular characteristics. Okay. But here in high volume instrument it is a combination of instruments which gives a overall characteristic it is not the single instrument it is a total system that is why we call it as a high volume instrument system. Okay. This is a combination of systems where we take the principle of earlier methods, but he, like for example, in HBI we test the fiber length exactly same as that fibrograph. Similarly, the fiber fineness we measure here exactly same as the air flow method. So, that way it is a combination. So, in high volume instrument we test fiber length, length uniformity. So, fiber length and length uniformity we measure by fibrograph method, strength it is a bundle strength we measure here, strength and elongation in bundle form, micron air we measure, color can be measured here and trash percent, trash content can be measured okay. and even maturity can be measured. Okay. So, all these parameters are measured here and the advantage of HBI is it is a it is a very fast method okay. it is a quick method. So, that large volume of fiber can be tested. Now, the length the measurement technique we are not going to discuss here because it is exactly same that we have discussed in fibrograph. Now, length data that is the average fiber length based on the fibrogram 
principle of measurement of fibers. Okay, this is the same principle. Here also we measure the upper half mill length and span length. The mean length of fiber divided by the upper half mill length, we get the uniformity index or the uniformity ratio we can measure. So, these things are exactly same as the that we have discussed earlier. Strength is measured in the that is the that is a force required to break the bundle of fiber clamped by the combing device. So, the same clamp is used which is used for fiber length measurement. Okay. The same clamp here only the fiber is broken and the force required is uh, measured okay. by measuring the breaking force and taking the mass of the fiber. We have to take the mass of the fiber bundle and elongation is measured the amount of stretch which is which a bundle of fiber incur prior to break. So, before breakage the amount of stretch is measured. Okay. Then micron air, micron air an indicator of the fiber cell wall thickening and parameter. Okay. So, that is the micron air value which is actually the indirectly it says that it indirectly measures the that is maturity also. That is why here only it measures the micron air, but it says that it, it indicates the maturity of fiber also and micron air is an estimation of fiber fineness it is it follows the air flow method here. Short fiber index and this is it is index the index shows that percentage of short fiber in each sample tested okay, this specimen short fiber for cotton are defined as the fiber all the fibers less than half an inch okay, or 12.7 millimeter. So, after this fiber length test one can get the short fiber percent. So, that is all fibers by uh, the less than half an inch that we have already discussed and HVI can also measure the color grading. Okay. Color grading is the in terms of two parameters one is the reflectance and yellowness. Okay. That actually colorness color grading is important because it depends on the depending on the color grading the price also changes and it also shows the to some extent the quality actually overall characteristics of cotton okay. and how what will be the actually ultimate fabric characteristics fabric color it shows. Another parameters which it measures it is a trash content and here trash content is measured by video scanner because that that fiber rough cotton fiber the video scanner actually it measures the area covered by the trash the trash in raw cotton is measured by the video scanner commonly referred to as a trash meter okay trash meter is trash meter is nothing but a video scanner where it sends the the presence of any foreign particle okay it measures both the leaf and other elements okay such as trash particle grass bark anything other than cotton it measures the actual area present as compared to the total area of fiber the surface of cotton sample is scanned so any material any trash present inside the fiber mass will not be actually measured here. But here the assumption is that the trash particles are evenly distributed. Okay. The surface of cotton sample is scanned by the scanner okay, by the camera and the percentage 
of the surface area occupied by the trash is calculated. So, if we know the, the area total and then you add the total area of the um, uh, trash particles or foreign particles and compared with the total area and then we can calculate the trash content. From all this data, all the trash length strength data, we can predict the spinning consistency index and here an index which indicates the spinability of cotton based on the formula incorporated okay, which all the HBI data it incorporates all the HBI data. So, that and this the uh, formula this equation empirical equation has been developed based on the large number of data. Okay. Now, this is the spinning consistency index the higher value shows the better better spinability. Okay. That means, we can see the strength is in the positive side that means, if strength increases the spinning consistency index will increase. That means, spinability of the particular fiber will be better for if it is stronger. Okay. Then if the fiber is coarser that means, micronear value is more the spinability will be poor. So, that means, that is why it is in the lower side okay, the minus okay, negative side. So, spinability is indirectly it is negatively affected by the micronear value. Then upper half mill length it is a positive impact. So, we can see the impact of length is maximum as far as spinability is concerned spinning consistency index is concerned its coefficient is 49.1 very high coefficient. So, that from there from here we can actually get the impact. Okay. Then uniformity index, so it has got positive impact we need higher uniformity index then R d value and then Euler's value. Okay. So, this from this we can if we know all this, so this instrument measure after measuring recording all the data and automatically calculate the spinning consistency index and it will show that the spinability of fiber. These are the value and also it can predict the CSP from the fiber okay. that count strength product can be predicted here an index which indicates the yarn breaking strength based on the formula is using the HBI value. So, HBI value if we take all the HBI value that micronear and this strength everything we if we take we can get the CSP value. Okay. So, MIC is micronear value length uni uniformity index reflectance brightness elongation strength if we take and if a b c d e f g h g all these things are the coefficients. So, one can actually for a particular type of fiber particular and CSP here a b c this coefficient are not fixed because this this CSP also depends on the on twist or different and machine type type of machine and all this. So, for a particular industry when they are using this HBI data and they are getting the CSP they can actually develop this equation for a for their particular machine. Okay. This A B this coefficients are dependent on the, the machine condition the type of twist level and all this. Okay. Now, the applications what are the applications of HBI data? Who are the people who use the this data a cotton seed breeder okay how do they use verify the progress in attaining the goal in developing of new variety of cotton in the cotton research 
that they use. So, they develop cotton and then they ma measure okay. cotton producer to know the grading of cotton, what is the grading and the uh, they can get the market price. Cotton merchant and consumer obviously, they would lo know like to know the cotton classification of cotton, they would like to know the uh, quality of cotton and to assess the yarn quality and cotton uh, research, basic research and investigation of various physical properties of textile fiber one can measure. Okay. Now, coming to the next set of instrument which is AFIS advanced fiber information system. Okay. This advanced fiber information system is that it is a it is based on aero mechanical fiber processing. What is aero mechanical fiber processing? It is a it is just like a carding. Okay. We take the fiber mass and by like it is a carding, it opens the fiber, it individualizes the fiber, and then the individual fibers are transported, trans, transported through a sensing device. Okay. Similar to opening and carding, followed by electro optical sensing and then by high speed microprocessor based computing and data report. So, after sensing all the data are actually that, uh, that computed and then reported. This is the schematic diagram, the sample then aero mechanical separator that is the that it uh, then electro optical sensor central processing unit then it is a data. Okay. So, this is the typical process and the components are a motor or blower, lint waste box, control system or control board that is monitor monitoring, controlling and connecting. Then it is a fiber individualizer, the fiber to individualize the fiber and we need a software. These are the different components, this is the basic schematic diagram, okay, general schematic diagram. Here the fiber is fed here, okay. that is normal like in carding we feed, this is the feed roller through feed roller and feed plate the fiber is fed here. And here it is a pinned perforated cylinder which actually opens the fiber against the flat, okay, half is flat. So, the against this flat its fiber gets individualized. Okay. These are the stationary flat. Okay. The individual flat, individual fibers are carried away by the this pinned cylinder and from here it is transmitted to the another cylinder opened fiber individual fiber there is a the there is a stripping action is there this is transferred to the pinned another pinned cylinder and from there fiber is passing to the sensor individual fibers are passing to the sensor and trash particles are separated. This trash particles are separated, the fibers, the individual fibers are moving here. We are not talking about the large number of cluster of fibers, which high volume instrument deals with. The high volume instrument, the difference here is that in high volume instrument, we deal with the cluster of fibers at a time, be it in fiber length fiber microneer, fiber whatever may be, but here it measures the individual fiber. That is why using the spinned cylinder fibers get individualized, then fiber one by one fibers goes to the sensor and the truss is totally separated here. Okay. Now, this is the fiber sensor from the sensor single fiber is so from that equipment from the pinned cylinder 
this single fiber is coming. Now, here it is a source light and it detects the total fiber characteristics, fiber length. If we know the speed of flow and time required to cross this line, then it is basically we can calculate the length and the direction of flow in such a fashion it fibers will flow in a straight line and that is why this is the conical method a tube which actually ensure the straightening of fiber. This is similar to that transport tube in the in rotor spinning. Okay. This is so this fiber moves in straight fashion and here the light scattering technique is used to measure the diameter and also the shape of the fiber and, and the time required and if we know the speed of the fiber and time required to cross the line, it will give us the, the idea of the fiber length okay. considering that fibers are not the crimped and we get the office and this is the normal fiber. Okay, this is normal fiber that is the wave form and if the fibers are in the nef form, we, we get this type of peak. So, we can get also in FIS the nef content. Okay. So, norm, the number of this type of peaks gives the nef content okay. and, and this is the. So, the, we can easily separate out the normal fiber along with the nape and also as it is a light principle here we can calculate the diameter of nape. So, FIS length data analysis is very exhaustive from there one can get. So, once it is tested data all the data are recorded. So, one can easily analyze the data. Now, FIS data analysis is very important. Now, we will see the individual parameters how the data is analyzed. Now, the NAPS what is that definition is that it is a fiber entanglement. So, as per the AFIS, AFIS whatever entanglement is there it will term as the NAP, Okay, irrespective of the definition of NAP for other part it will trans it will actually term the um, classify the fiber as an ape if it is entangled any entanglement and it causes imperfection of yarn and fabric. So, we will get idea about the level of imperfection in the yarn from the fiber data. Okay. Nap count number of naps in 1 gram of material. So, if we test the if we know the number amount of material so, then we can calculate the nap count. So, it measures the number of nap. Okay. So, quality level nap size. So, it measures the size of nap also. So, nap the average diameter in micron. So, it measures the size of nap and determines the impact on yarn and fabric. So, if we know the size of the nap so, it can we can predict the what will be its impact on the appearance of yarn or in fabric okay. count of nap or so coefficient of variation between the sample. So, that C B percent of nap we can measure okay. and from there we can calculate nap removal efficiency. So, if we take suppose in uh, carding or for any method before carding and after cutting if we measure the so input minus output divided by input multiplied by 100 is it gives the idea about the nap removal efficiency. So, just we can try to see here only if we get the nap data we are we are able to get so many uh, parameters okay. and we can predict the actual appearance of the actual quality of the final product. Similarly, we can see the length and diameter data. NAP is separately measured because of the 
signal. Okay. Now, length and diameter they are measured simultaneously because the when fiber is moving straight away in that case length we can measure length is uh, in terms of mass we can measure because we know the what is the mass we have fed in the machine because nothing is getting going waste. So, in terms of mass the mean length by weight if we know the mass and if we know the individual fiber length. So, it is a it is comparable with HVI 50 percent span length that we can compare the that is mean length by weight. Then we have the fiber length of individual fiber length of, then we can measure the C V percent C V percent of fiber length, but C V percent of fiber length we cannot measure in other technique because other technique we can measure the variability in other way that we have seen uniformity index uniformity ratio, but here as we have got individual fiber length we can calculate the coefficient of variation of fiber length by weight distribution ok. This, this is actually we can predict the spinning performance of and, and the yarn quality ok. And also as we have the number length of individual fiber, we can also calculate the short fiber content. The fiber by in the on the weight basis the length which is less than half inch. So, we can do uh, the mean it, this is comparable with the short fiber index of the HVI upper quartile length because we have the fiber length. So, we, we can measure the upper quartile length it is a top 25 percent mean length we can measure we can measure the calculate the mean length and coefficient of variation of length ok. That is this is in in the terms of number here it is important is that in affis we measure the individual fiber. So, that means number is there so we can calculate on the basis of number also short fiber content in number in terms of and 5 percent in number and 1 percent in number also. This is important for machine setting it is a 5 longest 5 percent of fiber length ok by number longest 1 percent of fiber length by number. So, this will give us the idea about the, the machine setting we can get the help with the using the fiber length. So, we can use either 1 percent or 5 percent for machine setting. Then coming to the diameter. So, as we can scan the fiber total fiber the length as well as the diameter can also be measured. Diameter of individual point not the individual fiber individual point is recorded ok. Average diameter of the fiber by number can be measured because we know the diameter. So, mean diameter can be micronear estimation here we do not we do not measure micronear we measure directly the diameter because it is a light scattering lights principle and coefficient of variation in diameter we have the individual data and then we can measure the coefficient of variation. It estimates distribution for micronear or denier that is the and length by number it is the length of individual fibers these categories are added together ok to obtain the length measured for short fiber and average the mean length. So, that we, we have the individual data length by number measurement is not influenced by the weight. Okay, weight it is not in place because it is a individual data in where number is there. In textile processing it is recommended that the length by number be used to determine the machine and equipment setting. That is why we have we have actually seen here for me equipment setting it is 1 percent by number 5 percent by number is setting. It is not by the mass 1 percent by weight by 1 percent 5 percent by weight it is not used. Also to determine the fiber damage as representation of short fiber percentage. 
So, if we want to measure the fiber damage, it should not be by mass, it should be by number. Okay. The for 100 fibers, how many fibers are, uh, are got uh, damaged? Because the if the diameter changes, then the mass will get complex. Okay. The, so, that is why we must get idea about the number because F is they measure in terms of actual individual fiber. This is the length data, just this is the by number length by number. So, in y axis it is a it is a length okay? and x axis it is a cumulative frequency. So, suppose in this picture, so the 30 millimeter length the cumulative frequency is this one. Okay? like 28, 20 millimeter cumulative frequency is say this or this is say 25 percent like this. This is the cumulative frequency. Now, for from this cumulative frequency one can easily form the staple diagram. If we know the number of fibers for a particular length, then this is the what about this is what about this staple diagram? Staple diagram is nothing but the number of fibers in a particular length, which is arranged in from the descending order. That is what here all the individual fiber lengths are available. That is why it gives it can predict the staple diagram also, which is not possible in fibrogram on HVI, because HVI and fibrogram we are we do not get the exact length, actual length of fiber here individual length of fiber is there that is why we get and from there we can also analyze the fibrogram uh, diagram okay so, staple diagram okay so if it is asked which instrument among afis and hbi gives the idea about the staple diagram it's the afis okay because we get the individual length now trash data analysis so here one sensor measures the the fiber length fiber characteristics and there is another sensor which actually counts the trash particle. So, the trash is separated in other direction total count. So, individual trash is counted when trash is getting separated number of trash all particles are counted overall trash level by optical sensor. Okay. Trash counts all particles larger than 500 micron. So, total count is total number of trash and trash count is actually it is all trash particles it is a more than 500 micron. Here the trash is divided into two distinct way one is larger particles are known as trash and another particle which is dust. Okay. Trash because larger particles always have tendency to remain in the with the material, okay. but dust gets separated. So, dust particles are defined as the particle all the particles less than 500 micron diameter. This is dust analysis dust removal analysis we one can do and total foreign matter okay. calculation of total foreign matter okay. and size average size of all particles in micron. So, that if we can measure the in by light principle light uh, then we can photoelectric principle then we can measure the size also. So, here it gives the total idea, but in uh, in that way and he in HVI or other method those measure the trash in on the surface. Okay. But in AFIS method it measures the individual trash. So, actual number of trash can be calculated because fibers are totally individualized and this is the trash data analysis individual trash. So, we can get with this curve with this curve we can get idea about the distribution of trash of different size. Okay. 
we can take action on that. And this is the trash data analysis. So, here the trash counter, trash and dust as are coming, this is the this sensor is for fiber, the two different sensor and trash is getting separated from here and from this portion and they are transported through this pipe and it is again it is uh, this is the sensor the trash counter is there ok. And affish fiber fineness is again based on the optical measurement of single fiber that is diameter and multiple light scattering angle is allowed to determine the actual shape that we have already discussed actual shape can be measured and if we know the actual shape then we can measure the the degree of thickening so average fiber fineness that is fin it's a, is expressed in terms of millitex it's a 1000 meter of fiber with a mass of 1 milligram okay that's called 1 millitex so if we can measure the mass then we can measure the fiber fineness okay and in the textile industry the following classifications are measured less than 125 millitex it is very fine like that okay. and more than 250 millitex it is a very coarse. So, it measures the fiber fineness and now we will end this session thank you. Mm -hmm.